Nielsen does not care about television. They are not interested in it. What they're interested in is data collection. My name is Scott Fogg, and I used to work for Nielsen. I was a membership representative, which means it was my job to go out and talk to people in their homes and basically sell them on the idea of being a Nielsen family. My manager would assign me a house. They said, this is the primary house that we have picked that we think will be a good match for Nielsen. That house was selected by the computer algorithms back at Nielsen um, based on like whatever information they can readily find, whatever information. Uh, a lot of it is based on the uh, the census, like the most recent census that took place. They go, we think these are the demographics that live in this home. We think this is the age, the race, the gender, the size of family that lives in this home. And that is the demographic we need. So we're sending you there. It's just a guess. People move every single day. They have actually no idea who lives in that home. But at this point, it doesn't matter. This is the house. It has been selected. I'm going to knock on that door and I'm going to say, hi, my name is Scott Fogg. I'm from Nielsen TV Ratings and Computer Research, and you've been selected. Congratulations. Congratulations. Regardless of who's on the other side of that door, it is now my job to convince them in the non-creepiest, weirdest way possible to let me inside their house. Once inside, I get to explain to them how they were chosen, why they were chosen, what this means. They say, yes, I now have to collect all of their demographic information. It takes about 45 minutes. And when I say all their demographic information, I mean all of their demographic information. We need to know when they were born, how many people are in this house, are they married, are they single? We need to know how many cars they own, what year is the car they own, what style, what model, what brand. And we need to know if they have any animals. Do they buy pet food? Do they drink coffee? Do they drink soda? What kind? How many TVs do you have? How many TVs are operational? Do these TVs have DVR attached to them? Do they have an Xbox, a PlayStation? Do they have anything like that attached to it? Some of this information is technical information that we need to help monitor. Other information is solely to be sold. The way Nielsen works is there's a little box that gets attached to every single one of your televisions in your house. And every single one of those televisions gets a remote control. And every single person who lives in that house gets a specific button that they're supposed to press when they're watching TV. So if it's just you watching a show, you sit down, you press the button, say, I'm watching this show. Your significant other joins you. They sit down, they press their button. Your children uh, decide to join in, they press their button. Your roommate decides to join, they press that button. And in order to prevent people from cheating the system, you have to press that button every 22 minutes because 22 minutes is how long a TV show is without commercials. So if you put your TV on, press the button, and you get up and leave the room, in 22 minutes, the little things are going to pop up on the box going, hey, are you still there? And if it's not, it's going to stop, it's going to stop measuring because they don't want you TV lovers out there to say, yes, I spent the entire day watching Firefly on repeat because I love the show so much and there's no more episodes. They're going to want you actually sitting there hitting that button every 22 minutes. So the first problem you run into is we don't actually know who lives at that house. One of the key things that they rely on uh, is the census. And when I was working at Nielsen, the census was already eight years old because they only do the census every 10 years. So Nielsen was working with eight-year-old information. And people move. People move a lot. So even if the, if the census was done this year, there's no telling, there's no guaranteeing that the information they have from the census is still reflected inside that house. So this house gets selected because we believe an African-American family lives here that have three kids. I knock on the door and it's some young white college kid. That person still qualifies just because he's not the person we thought that lived here. He still gets to be part of the Nielsen system. So this one house represented 10,000 viewers in this area. So on one hand, that's pretty cool if I am the person who gets to represent it. On the other hand, depending on who that person is, they may not actually be a good representative of, who, of what is getting watched in this area. Which is why they try to get different types of people, and which is why they try to aim for specific demographics. To keep it fair, to keep it even, to keep it balanced. But in their quest to be impartial, it can be extremely imbalanced. Because, oh, let's say this, say this person is exactly who we think it is, that we, person answers the door, it's exactly the family we thought it was. But they say, no, I'm not interested in that. I do not want you in my house. Okay, that's fair. I understand. People get to say no. What happens then is my manager gives me 100 extra addresses. Not just one, not just the primary. I get 100 alternate houses to visit. And it starts on down one side of the street. It goes from the left, every single house down this side of the street. And it's not just like in a certain area. It's not just like, oh, start on this side of the street, then go over this other side of the street. It curls down that one side of the street and it will just keep on going. So you may be in a neighborhood and then because that person said no, you go down these addresses that you've been given and you're going to curl outside of that neighborhood and go down a road that has completely different types of housing. I don't know how it is in your neck of the woods, but here in Chattanooga, it was not at all uncommon for me to start in a 
fairly suburban residential area like this and then move into um, more of a trailer park area and then three houses down i'm walking up to a mansion that's guarded by a gate completely different types of people and backgrounds so not only would you potentially be knocking on doors of completely different types of people completely different housing situations completely different life situations and all of those people are supposed to be a single representative of this area that does not necessarily reflect the demographic that nielsen is looking for there is also something to be said for the type of person who i frequently found at home i needed to put in a 40-hour work week and they really pushed us to work those later hours to, you know, start your day at two or three in the afternoon and work until late so that you could catch people at home. Chattanooga doesn't take kindly to people knocking on their doors after like six o'clock, after seven o'clock. If it's dark outside, they're answering the door with a gun. So my work days frequently, frequently were between like 12 and eight, one to nine. And that last hour or two, maybe just drive time. We were not allowed to sign people up. Uh, over the phone, and there was no system in place for people to sign up to be a Nielsen family member online. It had to be in person. And I'm here to tell you that your mom loves me. I signed up a bunch of old grandmas for the Nielsen TV ratings because we were supposed to stop as soon as somebody said yes. As soon as somebody said yes, that was it. We were done. And the people I frequently found at home, the people who would answer the door, the people who would invite me in were little old ladies. Do you and your grandma watch the same TV shows? Me and my grandma don't, mainly because she's dead and she doesn't watch anything anymore. But when she was alive, no. But this is why she, all those daytime shows are run like gangbusters and will never be canceled because they are consistently watched. Where your niche little fantasy show isn't going to get more than 13 episodes. Because when Nielsen collects that data and they sell it to CBS, they sell it to TNT, they sell it to Fox, what they're going to see is a huge amount of old people watching television. They're not going to see a lot of young people watching television. Also, three years ago, when I was lucky on doors, it was a time when there was um, a lot of news reports of ICE uh, knocking on doors and tricking um, Latino families out of their homes so they could arrest them and deport them. I was not invited into a lot of Latino homes. I was invited into some, but like most of them just looked at me and went, no and close the door. And I do not blame them, which is why they also have the little financial incentives. They can't say they're paying you to watch television, but depending on your demographic, you're going to get paid uh, a monthly little like, little bonus, little thank you for doing your job. If you're a middle-aged white guy like me, you get like 50 bucks a, day, a month or something. If you're Asian, African-American, or Latino, and you don't speak English, you get a lot more. You can make up to like $350, $400 a month because they are that desperate for that data. So the little black box that they attach to people's TVs doesn't work on computers. And as I'm sure you're very well aware, people are watching more and more programming from their computers or on their phones. What they did, what they tried to do, and I assume they're still trying to do, is they want to install a little app on your computer. When you turn your computer on, you're supposed to turn on the app. I never signed any up. I signed up one person for this because the app was optional and I just could not figure out a way to sell it. That didn't sound sketchy as hell. The way they explained it to us is the app tracks URLs and times spent there. It could not see what you did there. It could not see the words you typed. If you were like in a chat room or anything like that, but it would say, Oh, you went to the weather channel.com and you spent five minutes there. Oh, you went to Netflix and spent two and a half hours there. Oh, you went to Pornhub and spent seven hours there. Pervert. And when I would talk about it, people, you could see the, you could see it in their minds because then they would go, does it know when I go to my bank? And I would say, yes, yes, we can tell when you log into your bank. And at that point, I had just no way of convincing them that Nielsen had no ability to track their account number, their password. They just had to take it on good faith that this stranger they met 45 minutes ago is not trying to hack into their system. I'd also like to take you back to three years ago when we were starting to experience all that uh, hacking interference with our computers and our electoral process. It was a big issue. And people were very suspicious. It didn't matter that they could get paid more a month. They were like, no, you're not getting on my computer, thanks. But again, 
it just introduced another flaw in the system. Because Nielsen, just like all of television, is still trying to catch up to technology and figure out how to figure out what people are watching, how they're doing it, and where. So like any time someone talks about how the, t the Nielsen TV ratings dictate what gets canceled and what gets renewed, I just get sad. Because I've met the people who are using the remote controls. And I know what information is being collected. I know what information is not being collected. And it it's all a, a very great system from 20 years ago. Early 2000s, this seems like this would have been it. Now it's just inadequate. The problem is, I don't know if anybody knows what the best system would be. So for the time being, this is what we're stuck with. I'm sorry.